your word may increase. Please be seated. This morning's message is titled, Rejoice. This is an interesting season, isn't it that? It's Advent. We prepare yet again for God to take human form, for God to come to earth, to camp out, to be among us. Some of us have seen several Advents, right? More than some of us want to acknowledge. For many of us, this is a season of preparation for Christmas. I mean, there's joy, and folks are going to parties, and everyone's cheery. But for all too many, this season is one of sadness. It is one of depression. It can be a season of darkness. For some, it is difficult to find joy. Life has dealt them a rough hand. We lit the third candle in the Advent wreath that represents joy, the peak one this morning. It is Gaudete Sunday. Joy to the world, joy to the world. Rejoice, rejoice. And yet in the Gospel, John the Baptist is in prison. Prison is where those who waited to be exonerated, exiled, or executed were sent. Prison where you might find yourself if you tell the truth about what God wants as opposed to what human beings want. If you proclaim the word in opposition to those who, have, who are in power, you may find yourself in prison. Paul and Timothy wound up in prison. The three Hebrew boys, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, you might know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those were their real names before the oppressors changed their names. I mean, they found themselves in prison because they followed God and not a human being. Rejoice in the Lord always. That's what we've been taught, right? But sometimes, if we're honest, it is difficult to do. There are some days, some times, some seasons when it is difficult to find joy. It is difficult to rejoice. And we really don't know who's sitting in our pews as we are rushing around, decking the halls with holly. We are running around all cheery, and there are people sitting next to us who are living in the prison of their hearts, the prison of their minds, the prison of their lives, and can't figure out why. John can't figure out what is going on. Please come in. <laughs> John has been paving the way. John has been proclaiming the coming of the Lord. John has known Jesus was the one since Mary, the mother of God, visited her cousin Elizabeth, and John was in Elizabeth's womb, and when Mary showed up, what did John do? He left inside. So he has known that this is the one. John has been there since before Jesus was born. And now John has lived, he has seen Jesus perform miracles, miracles only someone special can perform. But here he is. John is in jail. Another innocent man in jail. Evil seems to be winning. Herod's power is growing while Jesus, well, Jesus, where is the miracle worker when your cousin is sitting in prison? <laughs> is it any wonder John asked, are you, Jesus, really the one? Or should we wait for another? Are you really the one who has come to change things, to get Rome's foot off our necks? Or is there someone else? Are you really the Lamb of God who is going to be sent, who is being sent to take away the sins of the world when it looks like sin is having a field day? We sing a hymn sometimes to fix it, Jesus. Fix it like you said you would. And some of us might say, okay, we've sung that several times now, Jesus. When are you going to fix it? Right? When do I, you, you can say that. It's not like a thunderbolt's going to come down and hit you. <laughs> not like that's going to happen. Are you the one? 
There are times when it, in our lives when it seems like when everything is going downhill, when you just can't get a break. It doesn't matter what happens. You get a nickel and they take a dollar. Right? 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 It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't seem like things are going your way. And so when, it, when you're faced with adversity, there are times when their doubt seeps in, right? And you go, Jesus, are you the one or should I wait for another? For those who are suffering during the season, for those who cannot find joy during the season, in a season that is supposed to be joyous, when everybody is running around, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy this, Happy yeah. that, we don't even notice when we walk by somebody who stands here and says, what's there to be happy about? That's right. We're too busy, God, oh, we've got, we're, you know, bogged down with bags, and we don't see that person, but what is there to be happy about? This is a season where there are plenty of people who are asking, Jesus, are you the one? Or should we wait for another? And so John sends his disciples to pose that question to Jesus. Because he said, I've seen everything you've done. I've heard what you said. But you're the one who's supposed to free us from all this. And so he sends his disciples. And you know how Jesus is? Jesus never answers you directly. He just can't say yes or no. Right? Jesus is always sending you around, giving you a puzzle to figure out. And so Jesus sends back this answer with the disciples to John. Go tell John what you see and hear, that the blind receive their sight, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the lepers are cured, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And so the disciples are going like, this is not going to be good. And so they go back to John and they deliver that message. And we can imagine John looking at the messengers through the bars, right? Going like, whoopee. Whoopee do. Well, Jesus, with all of that, guess where I still am? I'm still in prison. And I'm your cousin. I'm glad all of these folks received your help. But the one who's been out there proclaiming your coming, the one who's been out there straightening the roads, the one who's been out there clearing the way, can you help your cousin out? Can you help your cousin out? I mean, John knew that Jesus was the one, right? But now there's some doubt slipping in. And we don't like to admit that sometimes doubt slips in. But that's okay. And so what happened? What happened to John that doubt is slipping in? Prison happened. And prison can change your perspective on a lot of things. And you might think that John is selfish, that he's being selfish, thinking about himself. After all, Jesus has been busy. I mean, he's been been given sight and he's been doing all these things. But John's response, John's behavior gives us insight into those who are suffering during the season, who are watching everyone else have a good time being delivered and yet find themselves in an emotionally dark place. Prison has happened to them. Prison can take all forms and shapes. I mean, John has been doing what he was called to do, right? You do everything you're supposed to do, and you end up in prison. And you ask, what's up with that? So Jesus, are you the one who can take care of this? Or should I wait for another? Something is not sitting right for John. And he has doubts. He has doubts. And sometimes we wait for the one who said they're going to fix it to actually fix it. I've always had difficulty with uh, prison ministry. There are some people who are really, really good at prison ministry. I'm not one of those folks. Number one, I had trouble when the doors start clanging. I want to be able to get out. <laughs> I want to be able to get out. But you go into prison ministry, and you supposed to take hope to folks. Now, some of those folks will get out, but some of those folks you go to visit will never get out. And so you go, well, you know, you need to remember 
Paul. And they go like, really? <laughs> and you talk about Jesus' crucifixion, and you go, really? That is supposed to make me feel what? Better? As if misery loves company. Now, there's some people who are very good at that. But when I hear the words, lean on the Lord, for me, sometimes they are very empty when you're doing prison ministry, when the only thing you have to lean on are prison bars. Are prison bars. And so sometimes we have to think about all of the prisons that people find themselves in and how do we help them. It's not good enough to say, oh, it's Christmas, cheer up! <laughs> well, this too shall pass. You have never said that, right? <laughs> this too shall pass? You know, okay, <laughs> when is it going to pass? <laughs> for John and for those in all kinds of prisons, loneliness, ill health, poverty, Jesus answers a question with a litany of things that he has done. So he's healed, he's given sight, he's resurrected. And so we could get, we could, we could also repeat that litany to people who find themselves in a dark place, and they would say, I'm still ill. I'm still homeless. Ain't nobody ever raised my husband, my wife, my children. And then we have to kind of backstep. We have to kind of backstep. But what Jesus is telling John is that sometimes you have to replay the tape of what God has done in the past. Remember things that God has done in the past. Doesn't mean that people are just going to flip and be joyous, but remember things that God has done in the past. It's like being at a family gathering and someone tells a story about Aunt Susie. And everybody's laughing, right? Because they remember that one time, that one event, and people find joy in that one event. That's what it means to rejoice. You find joy in the past, and you think about that, and maybe it will help you get through the prison you are in today. So that question, Jesus, are you the one? Can you help me get through this? What's going on? Is a question that was asked over 2,000 years ago, and it's still the question today. And it seems like the question has been answered. You know, we know that Jesus is calm, and Jesus is here, and Jesus is crucified, Jesus is resurrected, and Jesus is ascended. But in reality, we ask that question every single day, depending upon what's going on in our lives. It's not a one and done deal for everybody. There are some who have to ask it each and every day. Jesus, are you the one? And then find a way to rejoice because what's going on today is not helping me. So what do we do? What do we do? When we come with people and we sit down with them, and sometimes when we sit, we don't say a word. They're not asking for you to fix it. They're asking you to be present with them. It's called the ministry of presence. You just sit. If they want to talk, fine. If they don't want to talk, that's also fine. But this is also a time when we do something that we don't often do, and that's have a testimony about our own lives. And this is finding the little things that give us joy, the little things. Not the big stuff, I was able to buy a house, you know, I was able to do this, I was able to, the little things. And sometimes the little things is, do you remember the first time you saw your nephew? When he was only like that big. And the joy you felt when he looked up at you and he smiled. Or the joy of being able to get out of the bed and walking this morning, and that right knee did not give out. <laughs> right? <laughs> Simple things. It did not give out. Or the simple joy that Metro Access actually got here on time. The simple things. Or I love this one. You know how you get 
getting ready to give away clothes or you're changing one closet to the other and you reach into a pocket and you find one whole note and you think you are the richest person in the world. You can't tell me that a smile does not come across your face at finding that dollar, quarter, quarter. Or sometimes you wash clothes and you, you take everything out of the dryer and there's some dollars in there, right? You can't tell me that there's not a feeling of joy. Maybe I'm not happy the rest of the day, but for that moment, I am joyful. I am joyful. And so we, we help people pay attention. As when a group of women <coughs> come to this parish hall on Wednesdays to discuss how Advent is going to be different this year. We do that on Wednesday at 12 noon. But getting together with each other in community, whatever was going on before is kind of left out there. We deal with what is going on right then. We don't think about what's going to happen when we leave. But just that time, that space, being in community with each other, we find joy. We find joy. And so in this Advent, we are called to pay attention to all those who need a guide who find themselves in prison like Paul who are trying to figure out, Jesus, are you the one? Or should I wait for another? We are called to help them rejoice, to find something in their lives that brought them joy. You could be taking a walk and just find a pretty leaf. Have you ever done that? You've seen a beautiful leaf. And you pick it up and you're marveling over this simple leaf. But helping them find joy in the simple things. Helping them find joy in the past and bringing them up to the present. We are called in this Advent to be with those who are asking every day, are you the one? Or should I wait for another? And so on this morning, on this day, let us, let us take time in this place, in this worship space, to rejoice. Amen.